Well, we're living in a culture that is constantly demanding and we're supposed to be on and on and on, do everything with grace and ease and do it super smooth and easy. Maybe even post our accomplishments on social media. It's supposed to be all easy and we're just handling everything. But the truth is half the people burn out and it's not just the health industry. It's a lot of in the tech industry, entrepreneurs. It's a lot of different areas, brands where people are feeling really burned out. Women slightly higher than men, but still it's, it's a, it's a more reoccurring problem. That's one myth, by the way, it's not like one time thing. You can burn out multiple times. There's people that burn out multiple times and yes, we're going to, you know, address strategies on how to, you know, overcome the burnout and get, you know, back on track. But we believe it's way more important to actually be proactive. Don't even yeah. get there. We don't want to get to the point of we don't want to get live there. A life because that is more a little more balanced. The truth is, it we we can all it can happen to all of us. Nobody's immune. High performers, anybody, nobody's immune. It can happen to all of us that we burn out at some point. And if we're not really preventing it and implementing strategies now. It can happen. And when it happens, it derails so many things. So rather be proactive. I'm Heike Fallon. I'm a personal high performance coach and I help my clients master their self-leadership with a brain-based approach. And the brain and the body are definitely involved in this topic. So <laughs> it's my thing. Yeah. Um, I'm Shana Pasalakwa. I am also a high performance coach and I help women um, heal after miscarriages. And I am in the midst of healing after burnout. <laughs> Can you say I'm that with such, right a, such a good smile, but I know it's been- I hard. wouldn't have said it last week. <laughs> but the truth is it's hard. It's hard. And and the, the thing is, so burnout is really um, an emotional, physical, mental exhaustion. And it's really- mainly because of stress. Now it could be originally it's been often related to work, right? So usually burnout started from the work, you know, burnout, feeling overwhelmed, mm -hmm. stressed at work. But the key is it's not just a mental thing. It's actually affecting your physical components, your body, your emotions, and that has ripple effects to other things. So usually what comes with it, feeling overwhelmed, feeling emotionally drained, and also not feeling being able to handle the demand that we have. Mm -hmm. And anybody like us being parent, business owners, and dealing with all different roles in our life that we mm -hmm. have to do, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed and with the demands we have. So that is really what a burnout is now there's a fine line between burnout and depression because there's signs and symptoms. And we'll talk about signs and symptoms in a second, they're but they're very similar. They're very similar, very similar. And um, it probably depends on what you read, but usually because chronic stress leads to burnout, but the burnout mm -hmm. can then lead to depression. But right. it doesn't mean that it could be also the other way around. <laughs> you could be depressed. Right. You could be depressed because of other reasons. And that's, you know, you're more vulnerable to be, you know, mm -hmm. going burned, in, out. burned out. And yeah, so. But I think for people who are not, um, who don't tend to lean towards depression or have depression tendencies, burnout could get them there. Absolutely. Um, because you're, you're so stressed and your cortisol is so high. And again, we've said it a billion times, it's going to affect your sleep. And it's just going to be this, this Domino. cycle of not being able to recover. And that's where I was last week, where it was just, it just kept going and going and going. And it was a cycle that I couldn't get out of. And I got to the point where I needed to take a break and like get away from the house and go away. And what I would like to do is get to a point where I don't need to leave for a couple of days, um, which 
leaving is great. It's like getting away for a little bit is always good for you. Right. But not everyone has that ability to do that all the time. Yep. And it comes from a, a place of privilege. Um, but I, I want to be able to get to the point where I don't need that break. I can just manage my life and my stress levels without having to leave every few months. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I hear you. I I'm all I'm all in on that because again, it's about the proactive component. But since we already started right now of what it can lead to, yes. So burnout when you feel chronically stressed leads to burnout. Burnout can lead to uh, depression, physical issues like health issues. Uh, mm -hmm. Research has shown cardiovascular issues particularly, but even inflammatory. Uh, issues. Yeah, it's going to affect your gut health again. Yeah, because of the the um, whole cortisol, more cortisol, cortisol yep, stuff and and other hormone releases. Um, some people tend to also eat more, and it can or their digestive system not functioning mm -hmm. as well, so it can lead to obesity. Um, mm -hmm. It also can be, um, unfortunately, lead to you know substance abuses like drugs or alcohol and, and stuff. You know they have the yeah. tendency to, you know, well the the beer or wine. Well, yeah, I'm super um, stressed. I'm going to go have a glass of wine. Yeah, just trying to one glass of wine turns into some easy relaxation, or uh, which is usually not listed yet in most cases. But I think it does lead to also more phone use and screen oh, use. Oh, for sure. And, and, whatever couch screen, you know, any screen netflix surfing whatever it is because we're just trying we're just too exhausted to you know take mm -hmm. care of ourselves in in mm -hmm. a more better way and when we do that like you said you get in the cycle then because of of the overly screen use and all these other things you might not be sleeping as well if you're not sleeping well you're not getting you're out gonna eat more <laughs> you're gonna eat more and then it, it or or less but you still you know it could also go the other way but Bottom line is, like you said, it turns into the cycle. And then if you're not getting out of it, um, just like that, then you, the, most people either quit their jobs, leave, figure out. They're not to, showing up as or not their best self and their families. Yep. Um, I do want to talk about, you know, I, I did read this book for now and how to complete the stress cycle. And I think that goes back to, you know, when we get stressed, um, we are most, most of us are not completing the stress cycle, which is we get kind of stuck in this stress tunnel almost. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going like this all the time, right? Like we haven't, we haven't completed it. We haven't gone through and, um, almost healed from that stress. And so what they talk about in this book is pretty, has some great suggestions on how to the data that shows how to complete the stress cycle. And a lot of it is, are things that we talk about frequently. Um, working out helps that, um, being with community helps support it, um, using art to help. And it, what I find to be very interesting is these are all the things I did when I was experiencing my miscarriages without knowing that I was doing these things. So when I, after I experienced my miscarriages, I created a, um, I, I drew out like my own tattoo and I created a tattoo. And for me, that was very creative. Mm -hmm. um, and that helped me accept things a little bit more. I kind of went through that process. Um, journaling was super helpful, which is another way to, to work through it, writing. Um, and I did that on my own without, you know, I didn't know any of this data before yeah. when I was going through all of this. Um, but it was very helpful to help me work through and complete the stress cycle. And I think if our society doesn't teach us how to do that. And if so, we're always in this stress tunnel, I'll call it, and we're not completing the stress cycle, we're just always going to be going like this, right? Well, I, I pictured more, which yes, but in case somebody's still going like, what do you mean by stress? Like, I think also stress is normal. A certain right. amount of stress is normal. We all, we, we actually need a little stress in order to um, get the stimulus in our brain working on things. If we don't have any stress, that's, that's not good either. <laughs> there right. needs to be a little bit, but essentially you got your baseline. There's something stressful, 
right? Mm -hmm. And that should pass and we should get back to our normal level, right? The problem is we're at our normal level, we are stressed and then we're getting stressed again. And then more comes up and more mm -hmm. comes up. And when we're talking about finishing the cycle, what you're saying is when I'm starting my baseline, stress happen, like something stressful is happening in my life. And then I need to get my body system, my body budget, as mm -hmm. I call it, back to the, the baseline. Yeah. Yeah. And there's different strategies. So I love your, we've had actually full episodes about each of these topics. We had a full yeah. episode about journaling. You know, we had an opposite uh, episode about community, the social support, how vital it is for us humans to have that social support, right? Um, we've talked about also uh, values and reminding yourself of your values and um, by the way, in any kind of case, if you're really, really burned out, you should always seek a professional. Um, we're leaving. I'm going to leave also because it's just so important. I'm going to leave um, the information for hotlines in the description as well. If you're really struggling and you're really burned out right now, which means, um, you know, we haven't even talked about the signs and symptoms yet, but um, if you're really feeling like you're not being able to get up and do mm -hmm. things, if you're completely exhausted and drained mm -hmm. and you don't know how to get out, please seek help. Reach out to professionals. There's lots of lots of options and free hotlines. So please reach out. But um, where was I? <laughs> I don't know. But we could, <laughs> but but nature, nature is a good one too. Yes, um, that to, is one of them. Great to, to finish the the stress cycle. Okay, um, so we and and taking breaks. So we kind of jumped ahead now because we talked about it's about stress, and the the point is the stress cycle needs to be finished, or it needs to get back to your uh, body budget being at a good balance. Now let's let's jump really quick back to. What are a lot of signs and symptoms? Can I go? Yeah. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I got a few. <laughs> I just want to say it's most of the time more than one. So let's let's jump into yeah. really symptoms because oftentimes you may not realize, you may not have the awareness. It comes back to interception, mm -hmm. right? Like how, what do we feel? And oftentimes we right. can't identify what we feel. And sometimes we think I'm like, we, we don't, we're going and going and going and we're not taking that time to actually check in right. with yourself and recognize. Right. We're not noticing what's going on until it's a little too late. We're not and noticing. For me, I noticed last week that I had gotten to the point where I was, I couldn't make one more decision and I was super frustrated with my husband, sorry, um, <laughs> when he would ask me to make another decision. And it was like, I... I cannot make any more decisions. You are capable of making this decision. Just make sure you make the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes for me. <laughs> make a decision, but please make sure it's the correct one. <laughs> but it, that's where I was at, where it was like, I can't make another decision. I literally cannot, like there's too many things that I have had to think about the mental load of, being a mom, being an entrepreneur, being, you know, being a wife, all of it. Um, it just got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And that's when I had to peace out. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. So, so it's an, it's a cognitive overload. Okay. Yeah. So to, to not be able making that decision, uh, focus can be a big problem. So when when people mm -hmm. start feeling like they're having a hard time focusing uh, on work and get distracted very easily, those can be starting signs. Now, most of the time, it's, it's just not just the one thing. So you don't right. need to freak out if you were distracted because the telephone definitely distracts you very easily. But if you're really struggling to focus and really sit there and and that can be uh, a sign of that. So decision-making focus. Um, but it's also the irritation, right? Becoming irritated, not being able to control the emotions as well as you may usually mm -hmm. do. So everybody's different. So it, it really depends on, you know, who you are to, to see 
key is to see a shift, right? Is there something that changed? If you're struggling with a lot of aches and pains that are not going away and you don't really have something specific going on, usually back pain, neck pain are very common ones, but it can be even shoulder jaw, jaw pain off. for me. Yeah, because we're so stressed and we're, we're clenching and we're tight. So jaw pain can can be a sign of those things. Too. And these are all signs of stress, right? So not just like burnout. It's a sign of uh, general chronic stress. Um, and um, those things all add up. Usually it's about, you know, checking in with yourself. See, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm like, hey, how how is my jaw? Right. Well, sometimes you might feel how that can I relax it? if you... If you do a meditation, you might actually realize how tight you are. Mm -hmm. If you get a massage and all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't even realize I'm that tight, right? Or again, if certain pains and aches and pains are not going away, that, that could be. So those are a lot of physical symptoms that can show up, but it can mm -hmm. also be uh, gut issues um, that you're more sensitive. Your gut is more sensitive. Yeah. So uh, that definitely happens to me. My gut gets super sensitive when I'm stressed and when I'm burnt out. And there's only a few things that I can eat. It's yeah. wild. So another thing, actually common thing or, or known for uh, a characteristic for burnout is that <laughs> detachment, depersonalization. So feeling um, generally a negative, negative attitude towards things or just not enjoying your yourself mm -hmm. anymore feeling kind of isolated or feeling uh yeah dis disconnected even when you go mm -hmm. into work and you just don't want to be there and you feel like totally it just feels off yeah and disconnected so those are uh definitely characteristics of of burnout um key is also what usually shows up is lack of productivity, not getting things done. And then with that, you feel useless, right? You feel like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm not getting right. things then done. That cycle, and then yeah. the, the whole thing starts and goes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, because then you're shaming yourself and you're questioning yourself. And I think this goes back to, okay, well, what do we do about it? How do we not get to that point? And one of the, the, well, there were quite a few realizations I had last week, which I've had these realizations over and over, right? Like I, this is not the first time I've been. We call that out. clarity, right? We call right. it clarity. <laughs> yeah. But one of the big things is, you know, how can I ask for help and who can I ask for help? Because as a society, as for, you know, I don't want to generalize, but I'm going to, uh, women have a difficult time. Asking, men probably have a difficult time asking for help as well, but I have a difficult time asking for help because I'm supposed to be able to do it all. Just yep. like the women I work with who are supposed to be able to grieve and get past it quickly. I'm supposed to be able to do this by myself and I'm supposed to get through it and it'll be fine. And at the same time, I'm not supposed to experience any emotions except for happiness and joy. Yep, big deal. <laughs> right? like just try again and then you get pregnant. What's the big deal? Exactly, <laughs> like there's just don't don't experience any emotions. It's whatever, not a big deal. Pass, you know, get get through it. Um, but I do need to learn to ask for help, you know, whether it's from my partner, whether it's from friends, um, whether it's from my business coach or my own coach, like I have a coach. Yep. So and I think that's really important. Like being able to ask for help. I think another big thing is like, we, we just discussed being aware and compassionate with ourselves. And I, I judge myself very harshly. Yep. And we need to learn, I need to learn how to be more compassionate with myself and with how things are changing right now. I'm at a point in my life where, you know, I'm going through perimenopause. My body is changing. My brain is changing. My hormones are changing. Things are in flux at all times. How can I be more compassionate and accepting of myself? Well said. <laughs> <laughs> And I've started journaling again. Yeah. So, so here's the things. It comes back to really awareness, number mm -hmm. one, because the, the, the fact is the culture is different nowadays. There's also 
the whole reward thing has changed, right? Like we get rewards for, you know, you get maybe a promotion, you get more money, but, but a lot of times the, the, the reward was somebody acknowledged you actually done something and, and celebrates you. And we've talked about the importance of celebrating, mm -hmm. you know, small. We don't do that. Yeah. And, and with the social support has definitely been a little, you know, wonky 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 is a good word you know we, <laughs> well because you know with covid with you know having well with with our phones with social media yes. with covid we all you know a lot of us still work from home yeah um or have transitioned to you know still working from home a lot of us are just on our phones all the time and there isn't that social connection like there used to be it i have to tell you on the days that i go you know every tuesday i go on a walk with a couple of my girlfriends and those are the days when I feel most refreshed. And it doesn't matter how tired I was beforehand. It doesn't matter. Like the days that I am socially connected and moving my body, and it's not a super hard, you know, I'm not lifting weights. I'm not going for a run. I'm not sprinting. We're on a walk, drinking coffee, yeah. talking. So but we're connecting. So because that all has changed, this is exactly one point how we can proactively avoid mm -hmm. it. One is to create more social engagement in the way that works for you. All of it, you need to kind of figure out what works best for you. Right. So for you, for example, uh, going for a walk with, with multiple people, again, if you're working uh, from home, which ha there's a lot now happening. Um, yeah. Companies actually, because people are not seeing each other in person for meetings, it has shifted and it yeah. is possible to do something during zoom calls to create that connection and there's there's strategies out there I'm not going to go with it right now but fact is it has shown that everybody like lots of people working from home or if you're an entrepreneur and you're working from home or or not with many other people um directly in contact it does impact it so you need to create actively the social engagement mm -hmm. and that can be through other activities it can be through again you can do zoom calls but you need there needs to be a you little need to be very aware you need to create really more connection uh mm -hmm. because it can be very impersonal <laughs> so um what and i don't think a lot of business so, are, so one one <laughs> one key key thing to create and preventing it social a social support a community and Again, if if you feel you're burned out due to your in, at work, then you do need to create that there. It's not enough to create it outside work that to balance it off. Then yeah. you just go miserably <laughs> to work. Yeah. yeah. You, need, you need to really figure out how can I integrate it within um the workplace. Or I encourage every uh leader who who has a team to to create it again, right? Because it got lost. It got yeah. lost the way we operate, which is kind of cool via Zoom and remote, but it certain things got lost and they're definitely recognizing it now. Uh, another big one, and, and we talked about that before, time management. I think it really comes down to managing your time, including breaks, figuring really out what needs to be done. Uh, most of the time, my clients, when I'm coaching them, including me, I had to learn I have certain expectations, certain goals. I'm going to get them all done. Dang. Absolutely. <laughs> and I was completely off how long it actually takes. And it took me quite some time to implement really buffer time and making sure that my goals aren't totally, <laughs> totally mm -hmm. dream, uh, you know, goals for the day because they were just way too many, way too big to even accomplish in the time I truly have. So time auditing is usually a great way. First audit your time and then yes. and then set realistic goals and that you actually can accomplish. Well, and with that time auditing and after you've, you set realistic goals, then you need to create a better schedule for yourself. And I know that sounds super boring. I get it. Like, yep. oh, that's, you know, that's not very um, spontaneous or whatever. That's just so boring that I don't want to do that. You're going to be more proactive or not more, not, I'm not the proactive is not the word I'm looking for. You're going to be more successful um, 
and get more done and to have less burnout and less stress if you're creating that schedule for yourself. And like, you know, it's, it's not fun. It's not sexy. You know, like that's, nope. it's just one of those things that needs to be done. And with that, I have to say for myself, what changed for me drastically on not feeling easily overwhelmed and being more realistic with my time is having a good morning routine where I'm actually, I do look at, um, you know, I have different things in my morning routine, but um, I look at what, what are my goals to how they, where do they really fit in my calendar every morning and can I really do it? And which ones are number one, my priority ones, my needle movers and which ones are okay to fall off. Cause like yesterday I had a day and I had a little curveball happening. And the truth is I had to drop half of the stuff. And in the past, it's okay. In the past, I beat myself up for it. Why can't I do it? Now this came and I'm getting angry about it. At the end of the day, it's me, how I'm choosing to handle the situation. So Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, it it happened. What can I do now? So I I can't do both because it it cost me a lot of more mental capacity to deal with it than I wanted to. And so to accept and go, you know what? These other things are not as priority anymore as I thought in the morning. They're going to go and it's okay if I don't get them done. Right. I tell you what, it take, took me a few years to get there. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> a hard not, concept to learn, uh, but that's... It does not happen overnight, but right. you, you need to really slowly work on that, be aware of it, remind yourself of it. To, to have more self-compassion that it's okay to not get it all done. It's okay if it's not going all smooth and perfect and we don't need to catch up and look at the at the end of the day. If you ever go, oh my God, here's my to-do list and I didn't get my to-do list done, your to-do list was too long and you need to change your mindset on right. and give yourself more compassion. Look at the things you got done and then start making it smaller and also giving yourself some grace. Grace. For the things you know, that so not get done. The two words that keep coming up in my mind when we're having this conversation are being proactive, so proactive and acceptance. Yep. You know, we need to be proactive about how we are showing up to our lives and how um, we are going to schedule things and be proactive about the how we're going to take care of ourselves. And then acceptance of not everything is perfect. And, you know, I'm at a stage in my life where it's like, I have to fight very hard for my well-being. And that, you know, again, that goes back to the hormones that are up and down and da, 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 da. But I, it's, it's a fight and I need to accept that and just, okay, this is what, this is life right now. Yep. Now, of and course, if things don't might- happen, they don't happen. And if they do, they do. Now that might be a little more challenge. We're both entrepreneurs. We have our own business. So we do have a little bit the luxury there, but if you're in a work setting where that you feel like it's not possible, comes back to reaching out. Who can you ask for help? Who can you enlist to help you? Yeah. And how, how can you, again, manage your time better? How can you, um, you know, comes back to also stress management, right? Cause it's burnout is prolonged chronic stress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we do need to manage the stress. We do need to, what we talked about before, finish that cycle, finish that curve, getting it back down. So how aware are you? And I I usually recommend my clients to also keep track of by just rating yourself on a scale one to five, you know, how stressed do you feel through, you know, in the morning, midday, evening, just to even have a little better awareness of how you feel. That's so you- interesting because I do something very similar with my um, clients as well, where when they're first going through their miscarriages, I ask them to rate the activities that they're doing through the day and rate like how much energy is that bringing you? You know, how is that making you feel? And just to notice like, hey, yep. this, is, this is bringing me down. I really thought the binging on Netflix was going to make me feel better, but it doesn't like you know, and maybe something that they thought was 
going to bring them down actually brings them more energy. So I just, it, again, awareness. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing, uh, proactive, being mindful with your screen time, being <sighs> the, the phone just like sleep, yeah. <laughs> sleep is the other one. You know, we, we need to get regular sleep. That means regular schedule is ideal mm -hmm. and seven to nine hours of sleep. Sleep is fundamental to deal with chronic stress. And that would be the number one thing where I would start. Mm -hmm. And anybody who tells me, oh, I don't have time because I need to do X, Y, Z. You have time. Take X, Y, Z out. You're not, <laughs> if you're not making time for your sleep now, there will be a right. time where you're going to be forced to and that well, we went, really you know, we went through that time period in our society where it was just grind, 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 and no sleep. Sleep is, you know, for the people you can sleep when you're dead. When Whatever, you're, you know. When you're dead. <laughs> I and I think that's changing. I think people are finally realizing just how important sleep is. Um, so hopefully that whole mentality will shift. Maybe it'll happen with our our kids or the next generation. And the other thing is too, and we've we've done a, a whole episode about self care, um, mm -hmm. and it it is really taking care of your body, of your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health. That includes the gut health, which we also talked about, and strategies for that. Again, stress management, relaxation techniques, journaling, all of those strategies are part of self-care and, and managing mm -hmm. yourself of where your body budget is. And that will help as well to prevent strategies. But I think he wants for sure, all of that is important, but is your mindset and that self-compassion and to, mm -hmm. to shift from, I need to be on all the time. I need to be there with a smile, doing a perfect, you know, no, you don't. You no, you're not. If you're irritated and screaming, that means you're already a little far on the yep. other side. It's about really being okay with, you know what? This is how much I can handle. This is my current state. Depending on your age, maybe people go like, hey, you're not 25 anymore. <laughs> but um it's really about self-awareness, evaluating where you're at right now, what can you truly handle and be realistic and honest. Right. Don't shame yourself. I always like to also think it's like, can I sustain? That's my- Right. Can, all right. can I do this for the long run? Can I do this for the long run? I've had these that question more and more and more. I'm like, can I really sustain this for the long run? Is this really, or is it, am I doing this temporarily? Am I aware? And where is that temporarily end? Right. So, you know, if I That's have a, a big question, bigger project, and then I can go, you know what? Nope, this can only be done temporarily because there's no way I'm sustaining this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I need to adjust for that, right? And then it's okay. One week, two weeks working on something harder and doing it or dealing with extra stress. But then again, like yesterday, curveballs come and you need to adjust the other way because if that right. call was very important and it was, then I need to adjust otherwise the other stuff. Right. And, and that's what's okay really, that's it. really called what's work-life balance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, it's to be okay to, one has to go sometimes. It can't be all, all up no. there perfect at the time, at the same time. So um, did that help? for strategies to proactive? I think it's helpful. And I think it's just very important to actually follow through. We can yeah. say these things, we can know these things, but you would actually need to do it. Common knowledge isn't common. I'm just practice. talking to myself. <laughs> common knowledge is That was like directly practice. at me. <laughs> well, Don't do again, it. <laughs> again, it does take time. You can't, it's not happening overnight not happening overnight. It does take time. It's a journey and it, it may take a few months because creating habits easily takes 12 weeks right. to six months actually. And be kind to yourself. That's really what it comes down to. And in between a good strategy still to take time off, go somewhere else, recharge, but also that gives you the distance to gain clarity. It's not bad to do that because 
and that's why I highly recommend oftentimes turn the phone off in the line at the grocery store, just so your brain yeah. can rest and actually you might gain more clarity about other topics. Just turn it off and don't be on it on those moments because we do need that time. The brain needs that time off. It mm -hmm. does need that minute of doing nothing. Right. It needs to just have some downtime. So go and actually, if you have the opportunity to, to remove yourself for a weekend trip or something like that, or even a day, or just going somewhere, on a sitting, hike. sitting in the park or going on a hike to and, and to just do nothing there, like no screens, no nothing, and just enjoying yourself. With no podcast, no, yeah. just letting your brain do its thing. Just be present in the moment can help the brain to really recover and rejuvenate, but also you gain more clarity oftentimes, mm -hmm. but you, it's a practice. It's a skill. It All of that are skills that you can learn. So fantastic. Now, as we yeah, said, that was great. A lot of the strategies we just mentioned are all separate episodes that we've already yeah, talked we've about, talked so about individually. Yeah. So if you're interested in, you know, journaling, if you're interested in community, if you're interested in um, gut health, sleep. <laughs> sleep, gut health, gut health, we've done all of these topics at, as individual episodes, check them out. You'll find more detailed strategies on how to, and what's important. Hope this served and was helpful. It's all about, you know, living a, a happy life that we sustain for a longer time. So yeah. till right. next time. Well, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye-bye.